To give you a sense of kind of what that, how that would affect her, her, her situation, assume that she did the annuity. Assume um, that once again that she was generating seventy-five thousand dollars a year for fun and 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 other, and she was only spending five, as on fun. As a result of that, at the end of the five years, she would have saved four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. She would have had $5,000 worth of fun every year because she'd be really nervous about running out of money. But, but at the end of the five years, she'd be 94 years old. She'd have the house, which is subject to a reverse mortgage, so upon her death, you know, the bank's going to get it. But she'd also have $450,000 in cash to live for the rest of her life, right? And as I had mentioned, if she needed to go into a nursing home, that money could be put into something called the D4C Pooled Trust so that she could immediately qualify for mass health. Today's day, today is not the story of D4C pool trusts. They're pretty complicated, but I, so I just wanted to mention that. Next slide. Um, but I am going to mention this part. So she could be using all of the money that she has to do kind of like whatever she wants. Or if she ended up in the nursing home, that money that was parked on her behalf could be used by the D4C pool trust to provide for any extra needs that she had while she was in the nursing home. Or like like going on trips. If she was still, you know, if she was mentally okay, but just physically was having trouble getting around, then people could take her on trips. She could buy the new super duper wheel. I always talk about that when I'm using these examples. The wheelchair, the, the great wheelchair. The, the 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 biggest, the saddest part about being in a nursing home. How many here have ever been to a nursing home? Yeah, isn't it funny? You get to our age, it's like everybody's been to the nursing home, right? And that you all are like, oh, not me, right? But, but the saddest part of the nursing home is seeing the person who was in that chair, who was inevitably in the hall, in the chair, sleeping, and they're like this, right? You know, and you're like, oh my God. Now, the, the reason why they look so bad in that situation is because of the wheelchair. Because the wheelchair is the one that has the straight, the aluminum handles and the cloth back, and it's not designed for sleeping, right? It's designed for somebody wheeling you down the corridor, right? But that's what the nursing home has. Well. If you have money put aside for yourself or put the money into this pool trust, the pool trust can actually use that money to provide for those kinds of extras for you without the money having to be used to pay for nursing home care. Next slide. So she would so so Mary in that situation would have been okay. You know, she would have been able to kind of live her life over the next five years well. At the end of that period, she wouldn't have any, an annuity anymore, but she would have had quite a bit of cash, right? She would be okay. So, and, and chances are, and at some point, Mary's gonna die. And this way, we have probably set up a system which, was, which allowed Mary to stay in the house as long as she possibly could, and saved as much money as possible for Peter, Paul, and Mary Jr. In the context of that, what about long-term care insurance? Because I know people often talk to me about that as a possibility. Well, maybe I should be buying um, long-term care insurance in order to kind of cover all of my needs. Well, I guess I would just, I would just suggest to you, you, you may want to do that. You may want to do that. You, and, and, the, and the younger you are when you buy the long-term care insurance, right, the, the, the better off you're going to be in terms of being able to cover the amount of care that you need. And the amount of care that, that you need in order to make the long-term care insurance make sense is the, is the amount of money that's going to keep you from running out of money while you're in the nursing home. Now, now in, in Frank and Mary's case, if, if you were, if their goal, if they went to the nursing home was to be at the best possible, nurse, to be at a really good nursing home, well, the cost of that nursing home right now is about $400 a day, or about $12,000 a month, or about $144,000 a year, rounding to $150. Um, so the cost of that nursing home is about uh, $750,000 over, over five years. Now, remember, and, and, and by the way, um, suppose 
Well, I'll give you a, the kind of a, an easy nursing home example. Suppose Frank were dead and Mary went into the nursing home. They hadn't done any planning at all. And, ta and so I'm talking to Mary Jr. And she said, what do I do? And she's got, they own the house, $400,000, and the cash, $300,000. Well, if she actually wanted to save that money as opposed to putting it into a D4C for her mother's benefit but knowing nothing was going to be left over, I'd say to her, well, what you can do is transfer all the money out of your, your mother's name right now to you or to somebody, to the three kids, to an irrevo irrevocable trust, to something. And then just start writing checks to the nursing home. And you're going to have to write checks to the nursing home for five years because you can qualify for Mass Health as long as you have less than $2,000 and as long as you didn't make gifts for the purpose of qualifying for Mass Health for the previous five years. So another way of looking at that is if you've got a lot of assets and your person's in the nursing home, if you've got a lot of assets, you just transfer all the assets out. You pay private pay for five years. All the rest of the money is safe. If, if Mary had a million five, she could transfer everything to Mary Jr., pay those bills for five years. She would have paid $750,000. The other $750,000 would be safe. So there is kind of a limit to what the liability is. The problem in Frank and Mary's case is they have less than $750,000. So this strategy doesn't work for them unless they had long-term care insurance, unless they had some insurance that was going to pay to get through that five-year period. So that's the value of long-term care insurance, but you, you may find that that is very expensive. Uh, and, and by the way, that's the policy if you're talking to long-term care insurance people that they're going to talk to you about. A second possibility, though, is this one, and I'm just mentioning this one kind of as an aside. Um, if, if, you're, if you're not worried about protecting your cash, you're just worried about protecting your house, because for a lot of folks, the house is like the really big asset, as it is in Frank and Mary's case. Um, then what you can do is buy a much more limited policy, a policy which, as long as it meets these criteria and you own it when you get to the nursing home, your house is no longer a countable asset. And the house can't be, a, can't be leaned to the mass health. You qualify and own the house. Doesn't have to be, the money doesn't have to go to mass health after you die. It saves the house. The policy has to kick in no later than a year after you get to the nursing home. So literally, the policy doesn't make any payments on your behalf for the first year that you're in the nursing home. Once it starts, the policy has to pay at least $125 a day. And it has to pay that amount for at least 730 days, which is two years. If you own that policy, and, and, and if you bought that policy before, 19, before April 15th of 1999, and there are still some of those out there, those amounts are actually smaller. They only have to pay $50 a day. If you own that policy, then your house is safe. And you may find if you're thinking about long-term care insurance because you want to protect the house, that's the policy that you want to buy. That's the one that you want to buy. So it may be that you want to consider long-term care insurance as an alternative. But remember, in all of the planning that we just talked about regarding Frank and Mary, long-term care insurance was unnecessary. Right? Next slide. Um, what about transferring the property to an irrevocable trust? Now, this is probably, when you're thinking about these kinds of topics, the first thing that you hear about. And the first thing that everybody talks about. Oh my God, my asset, you know, what do I gotta do? I just talked to some folks yesterday. They're in their 60s, they're just about to retire, they're very, very, they've accumulated quite a bit. And the question is, shouldn't we be transferring things to an irrevocable trust? Well, the answer is, maybe not. Because, remember, as far as Frank and Mary were concerned, they never transferred anything into an irrevocable trust, and they did okay. And if you transfer things to an irrevocable trust, you're transferring them to an irrevocable trust. It's a trust that can't be revoked. The trustee can't be you. While you can keep a life estate in any house that you transfer to the house, you can keep living there. If you transfer cash to the house, you can't have the ability to get it back. And the trustee can't have the ability to give it back to you. Other words, otherwise, the asset is countable for mass health purposes. So in many cases, there are some limited cases where transfer to an irrevocable trust makes sense, but they're not all the cases. And, and, and it it's and, and it's seldom makes sense if you and your, your spouse are still alive. And that's kind of what I wanted to emphasize. Next slide. Um, as you've heard me say many times before, 
I, I try to give you ideas here regarding what some, what some planning options are, but the real goal as far as your estate planning is, whatever helps you sleep at night. You know, if, if, you're, losing, if you're not losing sleep over it, don't worry about it a lot. You know, <laughs> if you are, though, you should do something. The only exception to that, which I have mentioned to people, and, and I'm just going to mention it as an aside, is how many, how many of you here have a power of attorney? That's not enough. How many of you have a health care proxy? It is unfair to your children for you to not have a relatively new power of attorney and health care proxy. Because you, like me, we're all older, you know? And so the possibility that something could happen to us and just make us incapacitated at any time is really, you know, it's, it's higher than it was when we were younger. It's always possible, but it's higher now. You, you, and, and if you don't have those two documents, what you're forcing your children or your heirs to do if you're incapacitated is to go get named guardian or conservator of your estate. A very expensive process. It's going to cost them somewhere between five and $15,000 a source of great contention sometimes in families as different kids compete to be the guardian or the conservator and people start arguing, it's just a mess. You have to have a power of attorney and a health care proxy. They're cheap to get. You should talk to your lawyer about it. You ought to do it. Um, but with that, that exception, as far as planning for you know, the rest of the stuff, if, you know, the question is, are you losing sleep? Thank you very much. Any questions regarding any of this?